So, plans for today is to do a little bit more work on our strength. We'll work a little bit about the body stuff. Go through a few back bends as well, which will be cool at the end. And we'll play around with some handstand ideas as well. Um, so what, if you have access to a wall and you want to practice your handstands on a wall, cool. If not, we're just going to, you can also just practice the jump handstand. Uh, so if you don't have access to a wall, that's okay too. If you have access to a strap or a belt, that will be handy. And if you have access to one block, that will also be handy. So if you have those somewhere close by, keep them close by. Alrighty, so let's find somewhere comfortable. We'll just start sitting for a few months, settle ourselves in. Find our way into a comfortable seat. And as you're setting yourself down, maybe folding your legs or maybe kneeling, maybe sitting up on a block or a cushion to help lift the hips a little taller. Maybe let's soften down our eyes, even just looking gently at the screen in front or closing them all together. Start to become aware of how your body is this morning. Do a little mental check-in, working from the floor up, how your feet and ankles, how are your knees, your legs, your hips. Softly scanning your way up your body. How's your back feeling? How's your belly feeling this morning? How's your chest and your shoulders, your arms and your hands? And then slowly work your way back down the body, feeling that sense of moving from the floor up through the chest, and then back down again. And then with that little bit of information that we have now, just keeping that in your back pocket, keeping that tucked away for when we start our movement. Let's leave that and we'll move to our breath. Can we feel the inhalation coming gently, softly, slowly through the nostrils? And the exhalation just falling back out the other side. Noting if there's anything intriguing about our breath this morning. And once we've taken note of that, can we start to draw our attention back to our sitting bone? the base of our pelvis sitting on the mat. And with our breath, can we inhale, drawing up from those sitting bones, up the spine, and just feel that slowly lengthening our spine. On the exhale, feel that breath falling back down the spine, back towards the sitting bone, and allowing that to soften our body. Repeating this over and over again, as we inhale, can we gently feel that breath drawing up the spine. Maybe it reaches up to the shoulders, to the neck, and then as it falls back down, it works its way back to the floor, back to the mat. Repeating this and feeling as we inhale, can we find some more length? Can we stretch the crown of the head a little taller? And as we exhale, can we find some softness? Again, feeling the hips, the knees, the shoulders soften down towards the mat. Maybe starting to deepen the breath a little now, feeling our way into some longer inhales, some longer exhales. And maybe bringing a count to this breath. So we count to four on the inhale, and we count to four on the exhale. It really just doesn't matter how fast we're counting, it just is evening out our breath. Evening out our breath.
still feeling that breath on the inhale coming up the spine. Maybe we're really long now, as tall as our crown can reach and getting really soft and supple as we almost melt back down into the mat. Still maintaining some shape, but can we create some softness in that shape? Maintaining our awareness on our breath, we can gently bring some movement to complement this breath. So with the eyes closed, or maybe softly gaze. So it's in how to bring the arms out to the side, up to the ceiling. Gently looking up at the finger. Exhale, bring the hands back down to the side. Still having that count of four. Inhale, three, for two, for three, for four. Exhale down, two, three, four. Three more of these, inhale up. Maybe getting a little taller, a little bit more of a back bend. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, feel that breath draw up the sitting bones through the back to the neck. Exhale, feel the shoulders soften down, the hips relax. Last one now, inhale up. Exhale down. Little change here, inhale again, lifting the arms to the side all the way up, three, four. This time we're gonna exhale and twist, right hand back, left hand to the right knee. Again for four. Simple twist behind the body. Inhale up, two, three. Four, exhale, twist to the left, left hand back, right hand to the knee. Three, four, and again, arms up, inhale. Three, four, exhale, twist to the right. Two, three, four, inhale up. Maybe finding a little deeper back bend here as the gaze looks up. Exhale to the left. Inhale up, one more each side. Three, four. Exhale to the right, right hand back. Two, three, four. Inhale up, two, three, four. Exhale, left hand back. Two, three, four. Inhale, arms up to the ceiling. Two, three. Four, exhale, hands now straight down the center, past the nose, to the chest. Four. And closing down the eyes here, feeling a moment. Once again, as we're starting to deepen the breath, can we check back in with our body? How are we feeling? Let's start today's class with a chance of one on. Feel free to follow out loud or in your mind. Let's inhale to coordinate the breath. Exhale to breathe out all together. Inhale to in. Exhale together. And then inhale for on. Taking a moment here. Allowing yourself a moment to set an intention for this morning's practice. Maybe something that you'd like to focus on. Maybe it's a particular asana. Or maybe a mindset that you'd like to keep close by. I'd like to encourage you to be curious about your practice. Asking the question of where I'm at today.
and see if we can look at our bodies with fresh eyes. See if we can explore the edges of our practice. And being curious enough just to step a bit beyond our current state. See what it's like on the outside of that circle. Release the hands, open the eyes, and we'll find our way onto our hands and our knees. Grab our props if we need them. And we'll gently work our way through cat cow pose, bitter lasso. We're finding our wrists underneath our shoulders and knees underneath our hips. Inhales, we draw the belly and the chest forward. Exhale as we press the floor away, tuck the tail under. And again, just finding some inhale as we lengthen. Exhale as we fold. And just being a little bit aware about how our body feels, if there's any areas of tension, move into those areas of tension. Be a little curious, how does it feel? Can I soften into that? Can I move into that? Be okay with taking some little side stretches. Maybe rotating the hips and the shoulders in some circles. A couple one direction, a couple back the other direction. And then when you feel like you've worked out those little bumps and creases in your spine, Finding your way back to stillness. Shoulders stacked over the wrists, hips stacked over the knees. And can we isolate the movement of the pelvis here? So simply allow our pelvis to move forward, anterior pelvic retail, tipping some water at the front of our pelvis, picking our sitting bones up. And then can we tuck our pelvis under, posteriorly pelvic retail, back here in the belly here. And we'll repeat this a few times. Can we? Inhale, set some water at the front, active in the lower back, erect the spine and muscles. Exhale, tuck the belly in, sit some out the back. And it's a little bit challenging here to do it without the shoulders moving. Can we just feel like our lower back and our pelvis are the only things moving? Isolating these little movements. Two more of these. And then finding our way back to stillness. And what I'm going to ask you to do if you have a block, is let's pop that on our pelvis, on our sacrum. And for me, I've got it on the middle setting. It's kind of level two in terms of challenge. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can keep that balance there. And to challenge that a little bit more. Let's press down through the arms, lengthen our armpits, strong in the fingertips, and can we press into our right hand and gently float our left hand forward and our right foot back. This is where the block's going to give us the feedback. Can we maintain a neutral spine even with our hip extended? Knee and hand down. Finding our set point, feeling the bobble of the block if we've got it there. Inhale, forwards, right hand, back, left heel. Still pressing into the left hand on the mat. Exhale, right hand down, left knee down. Okay, one more time. Left hand forward, right foot back. Then we get a little bit longer. Exhale, left hand down. Right knee down. Feel how this really makes us strong and very aware and slow moving as soon as we've got this little bit of feedback wobbling around on our pelvis. Oh, there we go. Mine might. I couldn't hold it. So that's really nice. That just told me that I've fallen into a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. Beautiful feedback. And the next hand, 
right hand down, left knee down. Let's take that block away if we haven't already. And let's do that one more time. Inhale, left hand forward, right foot back. And maybe we stay here or maybe we bend the right knee, reach back with our hand, bind with the foot. Gently kicking the right hand, sorry, the right foot into the left hand, opening through the front of the right quadricep as it flexes. And then gently releasing that down. Hopping sides. Right hand forward, left foot back. An option to stay here or reach back with the right hand taking the left foot, gently kicking the left foot into the right hand. And then releasing. Walking the hands forward one step. Let's take our chest over our shoulders, over our wrists, and lower ourselves down to our belly. Strong through the tops of the feet. Pressing the pubic bone into the mat. Let's inhale to Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. And exhale back down. We'll repeat this a few times. Inhaling up halfway, maybe as tall as you can if your back's feeling okay. Okay, up front of the fingertips. Exhale down. And again, inhale up. Maybe we lift our whole hands off the mat. That's feeling okay, but strong in the feet, active in the legs, pressing into the mat with our pubic bone, shoulders away from the ears, feeling the strength build in our lower back. And exhale down, lowering the cheek on the right side to the mat. Rocking our hips to the left, rocking our hips to the right. Releasing any tension that we might have there. And inhale back to the middle. And maybe work a little bit further back towards our chest. As we press down into the tops of the feet, we have the option to repeat Bhujangasana. Or if we like to go a little bit deeper, we can inhale, lift the chest. And then exhale, press into the hands. Extend the elbows. Staying strong in the legs, tops of the feet pressing into the mat. Gaze softly looking forward. Urdva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, release down, back to the floor. And again, inhale, lift the chest, extend the elbow. Thighs are off the mat, shoulders are away from the ears. Hands are strong, pressing into the floor. Exhale down. One more time, inhale up, either staying here in Cobra or extending the elbows, pressing the floor away, strong into the tops of the feet. Exhale down. And then pressing the floor away, softly, pressing ourselves back to Balasa, child's pose. Having a nice little counter bend here. Flexing the hips, flexing the lower back, allowing yourself to breathe into the lower back. And if the hands are by the side, let's extend them out in front of the body. Utita Balasana. Inhale up, hands and knees. And tucking the toes under, pressing back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And keeping a bend in the knees, let's gently walk the feet out. Starting to stretch out the backs of the legs, the calves, the hamstrings. Maybe creating a little bit of a side twist as we bend one knee. Reach the opposite hip backwards. Once again, exploring our bodies here. How do we feel? Can we be a little bit curious about what our body will do today? And then finding our way back to center. 
reaching our sitting bones a little taller. Pressing into our hands as we reach our heels down to the mat. And then let's inhale to lift our right leg to the ceiling for three-legged dog. Exhale to bend the right knee. And inhale to open the hip, stacking the right hip on top of the left. And just being mindful here if you're sensitive in your lower back. If this doesn't feel good, just staying in the center. And then inhale back to the middle. Exhale, knee to chest, rolling forward and gently stepping between our hands, lowering the back knee down. Inhale, lift the arms. Ashva Sanchalanasana. And just taking a moment here, feeling a nice stretch through the front of the left hip flexor. Maybe our hands come together if we can. Maybe our gaze looks up at our hands, creating a little back bend, but always still pulling our belly button in, seeing if we can posteriorly tilt our pelvis. Inhale a little taller with the fingers. Exhale, frame the foot, stepping back. Adamukasvanasana, downward facing dog. Let's inhale, lift the left leg tall, three-legged dog. Bend the knee, inhale, open the hips. Being careful here again, if you're sensitive in the lower back. And then inhale back to the middle. Exhale, knee to chest, gently stepping between the hands, lowering the right knee down. Inhale, arms up to the seal. Feeling a good stretch here in the right hip flexor, the right psoas. Maybe coming into a little back bend, but only with activity in our belly. Can we try and draw our pubic bone up a little bit higher towards our sternum? Can we soften our shoulders away from our ears? And then exhale, forward fold, stepping the right foot to meet the left, bending the knees. Allowing our belly to touch our thighs. Drawing the hands behind the body and maybe just resting them on our sacrum. Or maybe reaching them up to the ceiling. Allowing our chest to open. As we softly allow our shoulders and our head to fall heavy. Taking a few breaths here. And then softly releasing the hands back to the floor. Let's inhale up to a halfway lift. Fingers to the shins, crown of the head forward, sitting bones reaching back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. Starting to feel that strength in the lower back here. Inhale up, halfway lift, flat back. Imagine someone's eating their lunch on your back here. Can we hold still here? Exhale, forward fold. And then taking the weight back in the heels. Inhale, lift the arms. Urdhvahasthasana. Exhale, hands by the side. Tadasana. Just taking a moment here with our eyes closed. Finding our way back to our breath. That count of four as we inhale, feeling that breath coming from the pelvis up the spine. And then allowing it to fall the way down the spine. Maybe going past the pelvis on the exhale down to the heel. Two more of those, inhaling up, feeling that breath draw up the body. Exhale down. Last one. Inhale up, finding as much length as we can. Exhale down. And let's gently find our way to the top of the mat. We'll work through a few rounds of Surya Namaskar, salute to the sun. 
There'll be a few variations, so listen up as we go. Let's inhale, lift our arms up. Exhale, bend the knees forward from. Being mindful of any sensitivity in your back as well. Inhaling up to a halfway lift, fingers to the shins, flat back. Exhale, hands down, right foot steps back, then the left. Kumbhakasana. Option to lower the knees here or keep the knees lifted. And let's inhale forwards. Exhale down, slow and steady, all the way to the mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Ujjangasana, maybe lift the hands, strong in the tops of the feet. Exhale, chest down. Pressing back using the knees. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. And let's inhale, lift the right leg tall, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, open the hips, stacking the right on top of the left. Being mindful if you're sensitive in the lower back this morning. Staying here for the breath. Then inhale forward. Exhale, knee to the chest, stepping between the hands. Lowering the back knee. Inhale, arms up. Ashva Sanchalanasana. Maybe the gaze looks up. Exhale, frame the foot, stepping forward. Uttanasana, forward fold. Weight back in the heels. Inhale, stand up tall. Exhale, hands by the side. Left side. Inhale, arms up. Third Vahastasana. Exhale, bend the knees. Forward fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Ada Uttanasana. Exhale, hands down. Left foot in the right. Kumbhakasana. Option to lower the knees here. Then inhale forwards. Exhale down, slow and steady, all the way to the mat. Elbows by the side. Inhale, lift the chest, strong in the feet, lifting the hands, maybe shoulders away from ears. Exhale down. Press the floor away. Adho Mukhasvanasana, strong in the belly. And take your two breaths here. Maybe finding some little adjustments. Activating the fingertips a little more. Lengthening the armpits a little more. And then strong in the right foot, let's raise the left leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, open, left hip steps on top of the right. Inhale, down. square the hips. Exhale, knee to the chest, gently stepping between the hands. Right knee down. Inhale, arms up. Ashta Sanchalanasana. Little back bend here. And then exhale, forward fold. Right foot to the left, Uttanasana. Weight back in the heels, standing tall, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands by the side. Alrighty, now we know where we're going. We'll flow through a little bit smoother, following the breath. Please take the variations that suit your body. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bend the knees, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ada Uttanasana. Exhale, hands down, right foot back, then the left, Kumbhakasana. Option to lower the knees here. Then inhale forward, exhale down, strong arms. Inhale, lift the chest, maybe extend the elbows, Urdhva Mukhasvanasana or Bhujangasana. And then pressing back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Taking two breaths here together, finding little adjustments, maybe letting a little bit of air out the mouth. Inhale, right leg up, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, open the hips, stacking the right on top of the left. Inhale, back to the middle. Exhale, right knee to the chest, stepping between the hands. Option to lower the knee or maybe we keep it lifted as we come up. Maybe the gaze looks up to the ceiling. Exhale, frame the front foot, stepping the left foot to the right. Utanasana. Inhale. Ardha Uttanasana. Oh, sorry. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands by the side. 
left side, inhale, third Bahastasana, exhale, Uttanasana, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, hands down, left foot back, then the right, Kumbhakasana, option to lower the knees, and then inhale forwards, exhale down, elbows by the side, inhale, lift the chest, either Bhujangasana or extending the elbows, third Bhamukhasana, and then pressing back through the hands, strong in the belly. Adamukas Vanasana. Downward facing down. Taking two breaths, letting go a little bit of air out the mouth. Inhale, left leg tall, three legged dog. Exhale, bend the left knee. Inhale, open, left hip stacks on top of the right. Can we keep the chest square to the floor, feeling a nice stretch through the left hip flexor? Inhale, back to the middle. Exhale, left knee to the chest, stepping between the hands. Option to lower the back knee or maybe keep it lifted as we inhale the arms up. Maybe coming into a little back bend. And then exhale, frame the foot. Right foot steps forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, raise the arms. Third Bahasa. Exhale, hands by the side. Just taking your breath here for a moment. We'll do one more round, flowing through. Just following the breath. Minimal cues now. If my cueing isn't quite as your practice would like, feel free to go a little faster or a little slower. Listen to your body. Feel what it desires this morning. Inhale, lift the arms, forward the hastasana. Exhale, uttanasana. Inhale, ardha uttanasana. Exhale, hands down, kumbhakasana. Inhale, forward, exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Taking two breaths here. Finding the adjustments, feeling strong in your body. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, open the hips. Right stacks on top of the left. Inhale, square the hips. Exhale, knee to the chest, stepping between the hands. Inhale, up. Exhale, forward, forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, over the hastasana. We'll flow straight on. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, out of Uttanasana. Exhale, hands down, left foot back, then the right. Kumbhakasana, option to lower the knee. Inhale, hold, exhale down. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, press the floor away. Adul Mukhasvanasana, taking two breaths here. Letting go some heat out the mouth. Inhale, left leg tall, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the left knee. Inhale, open, left hip on top of the right. Inhale, square the hip. Exhale, left knee forward, stepping between the hands. Inhale, up. Exhale, forward, forward. Inhale, arms up, third Bahastasana. Exhale, hands by the side. And closing down the eyes here.
finding your breath again, checking back in with how your body is feeling. Maybe checking back in with your intention for today's class. What things have we learned about our body this morning? What things are we excited about learning as we move into the standing phase of class? So opening our eyes. If we're using a block this morning, make sure we've got that close by. So we'll just place that just in front of our foot. And actually, I'm going to turn to face you, but you just keep facing the short edge of the mat. So standing here on our right foot, can we bring our left foot in? to either ankle, calf, or maybe the inner thigh. And with our hands on our hips, can we find our balance? Finding a drishti point, something to focus our gaze on in front of our body. Pressing firmly into our standing leg, our right foot, and our right buttock. And thinking that our left hip is going to be a little bit higher than our right hip. And then drawing our left knee back, maintaining our pelvis to the front of the room. Once we feel that strength, feel balanced, lifting the arms up, maybe finding a high prayer above the head, and then drawing the hands down above the crown. Maintain that strength into that right foot and that right buttock. Soften the shoulders. Draw the elbows back away from the nose. And then inhale the arms up. Exhale the hands to the hips. Inhale the left knee forward. And with control, can we step that left foot back, back, back to a high lunge, a long way back. And then from that high lunge, can we lower the left heel down, opening ourselves up to warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Taking a little adjustment here, making sure our heel and heel is in the same alignment. Making sure our back toes are pointing in a little bit, our back heel is pointing out a little bit. And maybe that left hip is just rolled in a little, especially if we're sensitive in our lower back. Looking down at our front knee, can we make sure that it's kind of above the right ankle and that it's pressing towards the outside edge of the foot so we can easily see our big toe. Once we've got our legs sorted, let's inhale, lift the arms, shoulder. And imagine we're reaching with our right hand forward and reaching with our left hand back so our shoulders are stacked above our hips. Checking the height of the back and the right arm. And softening our shoulders as the gaze starts to drift past our front fingers. Imagining the feet are stretching the mat apart, pressing into the outside edge of the left foot as we press into the outside edge of our right foot. And then inhale forward with our right hand as far as we go. The legs don't move. Exhale down, right elbow to right knee, left arm down, forward and up, opening the chest. That left arm reaching tall. If we have any sensitivity in our left shoulder, we can just place that hand on our hip. But if it feels comfortable in front of us, can we try and get long from our outside of our left foot? all the way to our left finger. Gently opening the chest, maybe even looking up underneath the left armpit. And if we're comfortable, maybe that right elbow comes off the knee, gently comes down the inside of the right chin. And then looking down at the floor, top hand comes back to the hip, extending the right knee, standing back up. Let's gently step back to the top of the mat. And we're gonna find our way into standing again. Now left foot, Vrikshasana on the left side. Ankle to the, sorry, foot to the ankle, foot to the calf, and foot to the inner thigh. Once again, pressing down into our left foot, the left buttock, 
lifting our right side of our pelvis a little bit higher than our left. Finding that visionary point, coming to focus our gaze on. Drawing the right knee away. And then when we're ready, inhaling up. Exhaling hands down just above the crown of the head, elbows apart. Feeling the wobble. Feeling that strength. And with control, inhale, fingers pull, exhale, arms down, hands to the hips. Inhale, right knee forward now. And with control, exhale, right foot back, a high lunge. And then lowering the right heel down, setting ourselves up for Virabhadrasana too. Right toes in, right heel out. Checking those alignment points again, feeling strong in our legs. And once we're feeling comfortable, inhale, arms up, shoulder height. Checking that back arm's doing its thing, feeling as if we're getting pulled in two directions. And then the gaze goes over our front fingers. Our shoulders soften a little. Feeling strong in our legs. This is where the curiosity comes in for me. How does it feel when my body starts telling me things? Like I want to stop. How do I quieten that voice down? What secondary cue, what activation of my body can I create that actually makes this posture feel? Okay, so that voice inside my head says, you're good, you got this covered. As we think about that, let's inhale, take the left hand forward, exhale, left elbow down to the knee, back arm down, forward and up. Paz Vakonasana. Reaching along with the right hand, pressing back with the outside of the right foot. Maybe the elbow is resting gently on the knee. Or maybe we choose to gently place it on the inside of the knee, helping to open that left groin, a little bit more of an adductor stretch, and a little bit more work through the left buttock. Can we think about that left buttock? Don't allow it to stick out to the side. Imagine we're pressed hard against the wall. Tuck that butt under, make sure it's working. And then top hand comes down, back to the hip, pressing into that left foot, let's stand up, turning our toes back to the middle. And let's step to it, back to the top of the mat. We'll just take the time. All right, we're good. Let's do this one more time. We'll flow through it a little bit faster. I like repeating our standing posture. We kind of know where we're going now. We'll add something else on the end. So let's inhale. Standing on our right foot, pick the left foot up, ankle, calf, foot in our thigh. And here let's find a different arm variation. So once you find your balance, moving into that posture that feels good for you. Whatever that might be. Wherever you go, stay strong in that right ankle, strong in that right buttock. And then releasing the arm, let's bring them back to the hip. Inhale the right, left knee forward, exhale stepping back, high lunge. Lower the heel down. Maybe find a little bit more depth here. Now, Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2 posture. Such a great way to strengthen our legs. Finding our alignment, inhale the arms up. Pressing into our feet, get lost, gazing past our fingers.
and then inhale forward with our right hand. Exhale down, elbow to knee, backhand down, forward and up. Pazvakonasana. Starting to get some opening through the chest here. Beautiful way to get a little bit more rotation through the thoracic spine. Taking your variation, making sure we're not lying heavy with our elbow on our knee. And we have the option to stay here, feeling strong and balanced. Or if we'd like, we can go a little bit deeper, bring the top arm down to the hip with our bottom hand, grabbing our block and keeping it in our hand as we take our gaze to our right foot. Take our weight into our right foot, floating the left foot up and just placing the block down underneath our shoulder. Inhale up, Uttita Ardha Chandrasana. Extend it half moon. If we're comfortable and we find our balance, maybe the top arm reaches up. The bottom hand can stay on the block or maybe it starts to float as well. See if we can get expansive if you're kicking back with our right heel. Opening the fingers away from each other. Maybe the gaze starts to go up towards the top. Feeling the wobbles wherever we are. One more breath. And then top hand back to the hip, bending the right knee, stepping back down, and then extending the right knee. You'll toe the feet together, but step back to the top of the mat. Grab that block so we know where it is for the next side if we need it. Alrighty. Last time, left foot, finding our ankle, our calf, or our thigh. Hands on our hips, strong in our left buttock. And then taking a different vowel variation again. Again, being curious about what your body does when you have the freedom to choose what you'd like to do. Being okay if you wobble here, using that drishti, coming back to our breath, can we slow down our mind, giving it one thing to focus on. If you fall back out, come back in with a smile, it's all good. Inhale to release the hand. Exhale, hands back to our hips. Inhale, right knee forward now. Exhale, stepping the right foot back. High lunge before we lower down. The heel to the floor. Virabhadrasana two, maybe extending the feet out a little bit further here. Finding our alignment. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, relax the shoulders getting lost over our front fingers. Gently pressing the outside of our left foot into the mat, making sure that knee is stacked over the ankle. And then inhale forwards with the left hand. Exhale down, back arm down, forward and up. Pazvakonasana. Taking a variation with the arm if you choose. And choosing to either stay here or finding your block. Taking the top hand back to the top here. Looking down at the left foot. Taking the weight into our left foot and just floating forward. Lifting the right here. Finding your balance as that left hand Stacks underneath the left shoulder. And as you feel strong, maybe the right arm reaches tall. Finding some length from the right fingers to the left. Again, being okay with the wobbles here. Wobbles are good. This is our curiosity playing at our edge. How does it feel to be on or maybe just outside our comfort zone? 
and we fail and come back in and fail and come back in without losing that sense of play, that sense of curiosity or fun. Using your breath to help with the balance. Wherever you are, two more breaths. Finding one focus point. Holding it almost there. And then gently bending the front knee. Top hand to the hip. With control, bring the back hand down. Extending the front knee. Toes in together. And finding our block. Let's place it just in front of us. We'll all come to face the long edge of the mat now. And we'll take our legs a step and a half wide. Turning our toes in, our heels out. And gently bending our knees. Reaching our sitting bones back. Let's slowly place our hands down on top of our block. Just to allow us to halfway Pasarita Parotanasana. If this feels comfortable, we can take our hands all the way past our box, all the way to the floor. And as we sit our sitting bones back, can we walk our hands forward? Maybe with blue to the block to the side. And with our hands extended forward, can we draw our chest back and our belly back between our thighs? Like a wide-legged forward fold. Feeling some length in our armpits. Feeling a beautiful stretch through our latissimus dorsum muscle. Pressing into the outside of our feet. Staying active in our legs. Active in our fingertips too. Almost dragging the floor back towards our body. Then inhale, the hands come back under the shoulders. Exhale with a big bend of the knees. Hands to the hips, we stand up tall. You'll tie the feet back together. Let's give the legs a little bit of a shake. Really nice. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a play about coming upside down. There'll be a few variations here. So if you have a wall, I would like you to come set your mat up, mat, a mat up against the wall. But if you don't have a wall, that's cool. I don't have a wall today, so we're going to play around with both options. I'll demonstrate this for you, even though it's going to be quite intuitive. If you're against the wall, I'd say take about a palm's distance away from the wall to set your hands up on the floor. So your fingertips are pointing, pointing the wall. But if you're like me and you don't have a wall, we don't need one. And then we're going to press ourselves back to downward facing dog. Hands shoulder width apart, active in our fingertips. And we're going to start taking our left foot a little bit closer into the center of our mat. So that's right in the middle of our body. And then there we're just going to lift our leg up. So a very short three-legged dog. And come up on the ball of our foot, taking our shoulders over our wrist. And then push back. As we come up on the ball, we'll lift our right heel low. And then maybe we just have a little flick of our toes and float. It's almost like that right heel is reaching up. And we just have a little float there. And if we're against the wall, maybe we float all the way up. And our heel rests against the wall and we balance for a few moments. Amazing. But if we don't get that far up, that's cool. Just practice five floats on the right and five floats on the left. And then come back down. Rest in child's pose. So if you do have any wrist or shoulder injuries, this is obviously not something that we want to push ourselves into. So maybe you practice coming up and building some strength, just coming forwards and back. If that's still too intense, Rolling over onto our backs to practice some belly strength in active Viparita Karani. So this is a really nice option if we don't want to come upside down today. 
feeling a little bit fatigued or tired, building strength in our core. So we've got a few moments now to play. What I'd love you to do is to play finding some float in your body. See if we can be really mindful about pre-engaging our belly and being soft on the way up and quiet on the way down. This is a really beautiful feedback tool, how much noise we make when we touch the mat again. So move through that, doing five hops on our right leg, five hops on our left leg, and then come back down, resting in Balasana. If you've chosen to take active Vipari to Karani, staying there for 10 breaths, and then drawing the feet back to the floor, resting in constructive rest with the feet wide and the knees together. And then checking in with our body, how are we feeling? We have the opportunity to do this one more time. If your body is craving for a little more strength, let's go. But if you would like to rest, feel free to stay exactly as you are. There's no pressure. It's all your practice. But if we're feeling strong and we'd like to come upside down or move through Vipari to Kanani again, finding your own way in, if you're coming upside down, active in the belly, seeing if we can reach with our top heel and find some floating sensation. Being mindful of how much noise we make on the way back down. Swapping sides. If we catch some hang, if we catch some hang time, amazing. Press into the hands, long in the armpits. And then when you're done, gently bending the knees, resting back, balasana. Allowing yourself to have some deep breaths. And then gently pressing yourself up. And we're all going to meet together on our backs. So if you're already on your back after Vipri to Karani, no need to move. But we're all going to find our way lying down onto our backs. Our knees bent, our feet hip width apart, with our feet just in front of our knees. Feeling comfortable here. Feeling supported. We're going to move into some little back extensions. On the next exhale, let's gently press through the heels, lifting the hips up so we have a straight line from our knees through our hips to our shoulders. And if this feels comfortable, maybe we interlace our fingers behind the body, walk the elbows in a little bit closer. But still try to reach our pubic bone up towards our sternum actively trying to work towards some posterior pelvic tilt. And 
and then releasing the head, lowering ourselves down. And maybe rocking the knees to the left, the knees to the right. And we'll come into this one more time. Keeping the knees hip width apart. Pressing into the heels, lifting the hips up. Maybe interlacing the fingers the opposite way. As we keep sucking in our belly, drawing our pubic bone up towards our sternum. Pressing into our feet, into our heels. Active here through the quadriceps and the hamstrings for Setu Bandha Savangasana. That's a nice way to strengthen the muscles in the legs. And start to open the chest with this arm variation. And then gently releasing the head, lowering back down. Once again, rocking the knees to the left, to the right. So we have two more back bends to come. So we can either choose to repeat Tetsubanda Savangasana, or if we'd like to go a little bit deeper, we can bring our hands up for wheel pose, third of the Danyarasana. So we place our fingertips just to the top of our shoulders, fingers pointing back towards our shoulders. Elbows drawing in by the ears. And we start off the same way. Exhaling, pressing down through our heels, lifting the hips. And then on the inhale, pressing through the hands, lifting the chest, taking the gaze back towards the body. Feeling some opening through the chest, opening through the belly, extending the knees the best we can. Finding our breath. Staying here for as long as is comfortable. When you're ready, tucking the chin to the chest lowering down onto our shoulders. And then lowering our hips back down to the floor. If you're comfortable there, feel free to stay for a few breaths. When you come down, once again, hips to the left, hips to the right, releasing any tension in our wrists and our knees and our hips. Taking a few deep breaths here. Maybe closing the eyes. One more back there. Your choice, either Setu Bandha Savangasana or Urdhva Danyarasana. Both beautiful ways to strengthen the legs and open the chest. Listen to your body, feel what you need. Talk yourself in and out safely and slowly. Exhale, lift the hips. Inhale, extend the elbows. When you're ready to come down, tuck the chin to the chest, lower onto the shoulders. Bring one hand to the belly, one hand to the chest. And maybe take the knees wide, sorry, the feet wide, the knees together. And just rest in constructive rest. Feeling the beating of your heart. As we slow down our breath, can we feel that heartbeat also slow? As we start to adapt to our new state, a new sense of what our body needs. Maybe feeling as if we're in tune with our body. And then gently bringing the feet back to hip width apart. Let's take our right ankle and place it on our left knee. 
reaching our hands through our legs, taking the back of the left thigh or the front of the left knee for Supta Ekapada Raja Kapatasana, supine pigeon pose. And as we draw our left knee up towards our chest, gently placing our right elbow into the right thigh, taking that knee away a little, reaching our right buttocks away. Closing down the eyes, softening the shoulders. Feeling the belly rise and the belly fall. Softening through that right buttock. And then gently releasing the left knee, placing the left foot on the floor, and crossing the leg, and taking the left foot to the right knee. Reaching through, drawing the right knee up towards the chest, keeping the shoulders and the head soft and heavy on the floor. As we keep reaching our left buttock forward to the top of the mat. Can we soften our belly a little bit extra? Sending our breath towards our left pelvic side, our left glute media. Finding a little bit more space down there, a little bit more softness. And then gently releasing the right knee, the foot to the floor, and crossing the legs. And rocking and rolling up our spine, we'll come up to a seat. And if we have a strap, taking our strap with us, let's find our way to sit with our legs out in front of us. And if we know we're a little bit tight in our hands, we can sit up on a blanket or sit up on a towel. But if we're feeling okay, maybe we just pull our flesh of our buttocks away from that sitting bone. So we're sitting up tall. And let's pull our left foot in. So our left foot is just on the inside of our right thigh. Our right ankle, toes are pointing out, dorsiflex through the ankle. And then if we're using a strap, let's reach forward, placing the strap around the ball of the foot. Sitting up tall, setting ourselves up for generous sustenance. And can we lift the chest, inhaling up as long as we can through the spine. And then exhale, walk the hands down the strap. Using the breath here, inhale, lifting the chest, feeling it coming up the spine, lengthening the spine. Exhale, walking our hands down the strap. And continue this until you find your edge. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Maybe you reach all the way to your toes and you can let the strap go. Continually feeling that inhale, lengthening the spine. And the exhale, softening the shoulder. The beautiful stretch of our hamstring muscle. We should be feeling this really nicely in our hamstring. If we're not feeling a good stretch, we can intensify this by gently pressing into our heel, almost as if we're drawing our heel back towards our buttock on our right side. And then walking the hands up the leg. Let's gently pull the left knee in, stopping side. So we take the right knee, the right foot to the inner thigh, the right knee to the side. Sitting up tall. 
Exhale, walking our hands down the strap. Inhale up. Exhale down. Gently walking our hands down with the exhale. Feeling the lengthening through our left hamstring now. Keeping our right knee reaching towards the mat as we find our way to our end. Maybe pressing into the left heel again, intensifying the activity in the left hamstring. Feeling that belly draw a bit closer to our left thigh. Before inhale, walking the foot, hands up the leg. And then extending the right leg long so both feet are out in front of the body. Finding our strap, placing it around the ball of both feet this time. Sitting up tall here. Setting ourselves up for Pashimottanasana. And the same process, inhale to lengthen the spine. Feel the breath come up the vertebrae. Exhale, bending from the hips and walking down the strap. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. And here again, a nice option to press the heels into the mat. As we do that, it's a nice counter pose. It's activating the hamstring. Can we balance that out by drawing our belly forward? Lifting the sternum and using the exhale again to soften the shoulder. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to soften. Such a beautiful stretch for our lower backs, our hamstrings. And we find a little bit more space there. And then gently walking our hands up our legs, bending our knees, drawing our knees in towards our chest, and lying down on our back. Pulling our knees in towards our chest, giving them a big hug, rock and rolling to the right, to the left, maybe up and down your spine. Doing any last movements that you feel your body needs. And then extending your legs out, preparing yourself for Shavasana. Extending the heels away from the hips. Reaching the fingers away from the shoulder. Drawing the shoulders even further away from the ears. Can we get long through the back of the neck? And as you settle down, taking any props that feel good for your body. Maybe something to cover the eyes, covering your body, maybe something under your head or under your knees. Making sure we're comfortable here. And as we find that comfort, can we bring one hand to the belly and one hand to the chest? And before we fall off into Shavasana land, we bring ourselves back with a gentle breathing technique called Veloma, where we break the inhale up into three parts, lengthening out the inhale, and then one long exhale. If for any reason this feels uncomfortable, please just return back to a normal, comfortable breath.
And let's coordinate our breath together. Inhaling into the inhaling into the chest, and then exhaling out all together through the mouth. One more time. Inhaling into the belly. Inhaling all the way into the chest. Exhaling out through the mouth. Well, practice will start now. Let's inhale through the nose, taking a little sip into the belly, just two, three, and four. Inhaling through the nose again, through the side rib, for two, three, four. Inhaling all the way up into the top of the chest, two, three, four. And then exhale out for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Once more, inhaling to the belly, two, three, four. Inhaling to the side ribs, two, three, four. Inhaling all the way up to the collarbones, for two, and three, four. Exhaling all the way out for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then taking two natural breaths. In and out, letting the air come and letting the air go. And we'll repeat this cycle one more time. So inhaling to the belly for two and three and four. Inhaling to the ribs, two, three, four. Inhaling all the way up to the armpits, for two, three, four. Exhale, all oh, slow and steady out. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling to the belly, two, three, four. Inhaling to the ribs, two, three, four. Inhaling all the way up to the chest, two, three, four, exhale out, slow and steady, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two comfortable breaths, in and out, in and out. And I'll let you talk yourself through this last round, we'll do one more round together, but in, out to the belly for two and three and four. And from here, I'll let you count your own way through. Breaking the inhale into three parts and one long exhale. Two cycles of that. When you finish your second cycle, taking some comfortable breaths. Allowing yourself to really soften into your mind. Maybe keeping the hands on your chest and your belly or reaching them back to the floor. Allowing your whole body to go ahead. Knowing that the work for the morning has been done. This is now your time to rest. I'll let you know when it's time to come back out.
and softly starting to bring your awareness back to your body. Start to move your body. Maybe rocking your head from side to side. Rotating your shoulders, wiggling your fingers, stretching your toes. Maybe reaching your arms up above your head, giving your body a big full stretch. Waking up again. And then gently rolling to one side. Allowing yourself to rest your head in your arm. Or gently pressing back up to the center. We'll finish class the way we started, sitting tall, long from our sitting bones through our spine to the crown of the head. Taking a moment to think back to our intention for the morning. How was your curious practice? Did you learn something new about your body today? If not, that's okay too. But it's good to be asking the question. Let's close today's class with one chant of Om. Let's inhale the palms together, thumbs up to the chest. Softening the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale to coordinate the back. Exhale through the mouth. One more time, inhale together. Exhale through the mouth. And inhale for on. Lifting the thumbs up between the eyebrows. Namaste. No